Here we're going to evaluate a nice integral using complex analytic methods. And if you're interested in these methods and other things having to do with complex analysis, I've got a full course that I'm building on my second channel, which is called Math Major. So there's a link in the description for that. So in particular today, we want to look at the integral from zero to pi of the natural log of sine theta d theta. And we're going to use a fairly well-known result, which is that sine of theta equals e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. So maybe we would call that the complex exponential version of the sine function. But we're also going to use something called Gauss's mean value property. And that says if you have a function f, which is, well, it technically has to be analytic or at least has to be harmonic on some disk, then the value of that function at the center of the disk is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f evaluated at a plus r e to the i theta d theta. And so this represents the line integral around the edge of that disk. Okay, so I've got a proof of this in that playlist that I was telling you about that you guys can check out, but we're just going to use it as fact here. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to do a little bit with this sine theta. So I'll factor an e to the i theta out of this whole thing. So that'll, that'll leave me with e to the i theta over 2i, and then I'll be left with 1 minus e to the minus i times 2 theta. Okay, so that's good. And that's where I'm going to start this. I'll put this thing in for the sine function. So that means I have the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of e to the i theta over 2i times 1 minus e to the minus i times 2 theta d theta. Okay, so we have something like that going on. But now instead of leaving this as one minus e to all of this stuff, I'm gonna introduce a limit. And we'll maybe talk through why we need to do that after we get it written down. So I'm gonna write this as the limit as r goes to one from below of the integral from zero to pi of the natural log of. And then while we're at it, we'll split this up using natural logarithm rules. So let's see, that gives me the natural log of e to the i theta and then that's going to be minus the natural log of 2i and then finally that'll be plus the natural log of 1 minus r times e to the minus i times 2 theta and then d theta. Okay so just to reiterate what I've done I've replaced this number one here with an r and took the limit as r goes to one from below. And then I use logarithm rules to split the argument, which is a product and a quotient of stuff, into a sum and a difference using logarithm stuff. Okay, so now we'd like to apply the logarithm to each of these. Well, this part is pretty easy because the logarithm and the exponential will cancel, but this one is maybe a little bit tricker, trickier. We have to recall how the logarithm is defined on complex functions, and it's defined as follows. So this will be the natural log of the modulus of 2i, which is just the natural log of 2. And then after that, we will have plus i times the argument of i or the argument of 2i but the argument is the angle from the positive x-axis but since that's a pure imaginary number that will be pi over 2 so here we have i times pi over 2. Okay so just to reiterate we can replace this entire natural log of 2i with this. Okay so let's see what that leaves us with. Well, since none of these things involve an r, I'm going to maybe split these into a couple of integrals, only one involving r. So now I'll have the integral from 0 to pi of i theta d theta. So that's from this guy right here. And then minus the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 2 plus i times pi over 2 d theta. So that's from this stuff right here. And then finally, plus the limit as r goes to 1 from below of the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1 minus r e to the minus i 2 theta d theta. Okay, so that's starting to look good. 
But now each of these integrals is fairly straightforward because here we just have i times theta, and here we just have a constant in fact. So this first one will give us i times theta squared over two evaluated at pi, so that's gonna be i times pi squared over two. And then here we'll have minus pi times the natural log of two from this first term, and then another minus i times pi squared over two from this second term. But now we see that this term right here will cancel with this term right here. Now let's see what we have over in this other one. Well, let's draw a picture of what's happening in the complex plane and maybe argue why we're allowed to use this Gauss mean value property, even though it doesn't exactly look like that. Okay, well notice we've got the natural log of one minus something. So let's go over here to the point one and then notice that since we have r here, that's like the radius of our circle, and then we're parameterizing a circle with e to the minus i two theta. And you might say, well, and you might be a bit worried that we're only parameterizing half of a circle because we have got zero to pi, but since we've got two theta here, we're really parameterizing an entire circle. So this is like giving us the line integral around this circle right here. So that means in fact that we're taking an integral around that circle right there, but we're taking the limit as r goes to one. Now I think you can see why we need to take a limit instead of just leave that value of r as one the whole time. That's because if we leave it at one, this circle will go through this point right here, which is the origin, and the natural log will not be defined there. Okay, so anyway, now we can apply this Gauss mean value property that says that the integral around the circle of such an object is equal to the value of that object at the middle. Or that's not exactly true, it's two pi times the value at the middle. So that means we can replace this integral right here, so let's maybe underline that, with two pi times the natural log evaluated at one. So again, that's just a direct application of this Gauss mean value property. But the natural log at one is just zero, so this cancels out as well, and that leaves us with a single number right here, which is minus pi times the natural log of two, and that would be the final value for our integral. And that's a good place to stop.